So you might recall from my intro video, I mentioned embarking on epic quests. Well, today we're actually going to go on our very first quest. And I'm also going to talk about something called keywords, which are crucial to completing quests, as well as completing some zones. Now, before you begin, I would suggest heading over to the arcticmud.org website and reading the Solus Adventures. There's an excerpt from Tasselhoff Burfoot himself detailing multiple quests in the Solus area. And then if you click on the tutorial link, step number three, is actually a written walkthrough of this quest as well if you'd rather go through that instead of watch the video. Now this specific quest is going to get us a free knowledge potion which is uh, going to tell us our stats and that usually cost 50 coins in the Solus Magic Shop. So if we come to the Magic Shop and do LI you can see here that number 11 is a potion of knowledge for 50 coins and when you're first starting out that can be quite a bit of coins you'd probably rather spend your money on shiny long swords and some bronze armor um, however if this does uh, if I am able to remember the key words and this works for you just remember that you owe me 50 coins so just go ahead and set that aside and I'll collect that at a later date once you have some more money uh, but let's go ahead and get this quest started so I know that to kick this off, I need to go and talk to a wizened old man in the Inn of the Last Home. So let's go northwest up south, and this is the man. Now, how do you know that you actually need to talk to this guy? When I walk into the room, he doesn't immediately say something. Uh, it just looks like another typical NPC to me, and there are plenty of NPCs that don't give quests. They could just be shopkeepers or just some mob that you kill for experience points, so on and so forth. How do we know we actually need to talk to this guy? Well, we can do a little bit of investigative work by first off just typing look man and see if uh, see if there's anything interesting in the description. So if we read through this, I think the last sentence here is going to give us our, uh, our hint. It says, if we have nothing better to do, we might as well try to strike up conversation. So that right there tells me that there is there's potentially something here. And um, now again, I know from uh, doing this quest uh, before that I have to type listen here. But there are other ways to interact with NPCs. I know that there's, uh, for instance, some other keywords that I've used have been like introduce man, I introduce myself to him, uh, praise man, uh, neither of those appear to do anything. Um, if you actually type help social, there are a bunch of different socials that you can look at and try to, you know, see if there's anything in there that's uh, that you could potentially use. Uh, but basically, what I'm getting at is you just have to try stuff. And uh, let's go ahead and just type "listen, man." And that is a lot of times "listen" does uh, can be what you need to do to actually trigger the quest. So when I listen to him. Uh, looks like it says he rummages through his pack and pulls out a crystal, crystal beaker, which he hands to you. Um, and then it looks like he wants us to get this beaker filled with salt water. Now, if I type I, I can see that I have a crystal beaker in my inventory. And I didn't actually have that before. And actually, just to prove that, let's go ahead and just type drop beaker. And I drop it. It looks like it shatters. If I type I, I no longer have it. Listen, man. And now I have the quest item again. So, awesome. We have a beaker. We need to fill it with salt water. Now, you can try scamming the old man <laughs> and going to the, the soulless fountain and filling it there and bringing it back. Uh, however, I do remember trying that, and uh, I think nothing happens. I don't know if he tells you that it's... Well, let's, let's try it. I can't remember what happens. Uh, let's self fill beaker fountain. Let's just see if we can scam them. Maybe we can. Who knows? <laughs> it's been so long. Uh, and I think once I... Let's examine beaker. It's full of a clear wicket liquid. So if I type display beaker, which is what I think the keyword is, nothing happens. Uh, present beaker man. Nothing happens there. So yeah, I'm pretty sure just nothing happens. We'll, uh, we'll know once we have it actually filled with salt water. Um, hopefully it's one of those two commands. But let's go ahead and uh, we'll just type drink beaker and then exam beaker, and that should empty it, I think. Yep, it's empty now. All right, so let's go and actually get this filled with salt water. Now, since this is a newbie quest, um, it makes sense that we would, uh, <clears throat> 
we would uh, probably pass the location that we need to actually go to um, in one of the lower level zones, which is the case here. So in the uh, in the Valenwood Forest, actually, while well, we're just kind of like walking around in the park on our way to the uh, to the Valenwood tree, I know that there is a pond location there, and this is just one of those things that as you're out adventuring, you just gotta you gotta pay attention to where you're at, um, be reading room descriptions, and just kind of like making mental notes if you find something that's potentially interesting that you want to circle back to at a later point. So this is 3 south and then I think it's east, east, uh, south maybe? Yes, here we go. Um, so we are on the pond and it looks like there are some brook trout swimming here. So this is a, a good indicator that we're by a body of water. Um, but if we if we look here, so we get our room description and we can see that there's brook trout here and they're in red, so we know that those are mobs or something that we can probably kill. Um, but we don't see anything, and this is actually perfect because there's a looks like there's a lantern up here, which is an object in the room, but we don't actually see that here. So we have to read the room description first off. So it says you are on a small pond in the Solas Park. The pond itself stretches to the west further. Several other citizens of Solas are here rowing and swimming. Now usually what I'm doing if I'm in a new location and I'm walking around just reading room descriptions, if I see something in the description, what I'll do is if it's something interesting like a, you know, like a bush or a pond in this instance, I'll just type look pond. Okay, and it actually gives me some additional information. If I go north and I type look pond, it says I don't see that here. So let's go back south and type look pond again. So it says the pond is alive with activity. Fish swim beneath the surface and citizens play above. The water looks dingy and dirty. Okay, well that's interesting. Now another trick you can use to see if this is actually an object or not is if we type get pond we'll actually try to get it. <laughs> Obviously we can't pick up a pond of water. We could also type exam pond and we can see here that it has a condition. A lot of times objects that you can do something with or interact with, they will have a condition on them. So that's another good indicator uh, that this is something that we can actually interact with. So, but how do we know this thing actually has salt water in it? Well, we could fill our water skin from it and, uh, or the beaker from it and just go back and try, but we could also try, I think, uh, if we just type sip pond, Okay, uh, it says that it tastes like salt water. So perfect, that's exactly what we need. Let's go ahead and type fill beaker pond. That is a similar command to fill water skin fountain. And it now says that the crystal beaker is filled with pond water. And if we type exam beaker, we can see that it's full of liquid. Now, don't drink it or sip it or anything like, else like that because what'll happen uh, is if you do, you'll empty it. Uh, and then when you get back to the old man, you'll find out that you don't have anything in the beaker and you gotta run back here. So um, if, you, uh, if you get thirsty in the meantime, don't type drink all. <laughs> so let's go ahead and head back to uh, the man and see what he has to say now that we have this beaker filled with salt water. Northwest up south. Um, so, once you've actually got what you think is the quest item that you need and you come back to the NPC, there are a couple of different uh, um, keywords that you might have to use. So, I think it's display. Um, I'm just going to type present beaker man because I know that that sometimes, oh, that worked actually, so that was what I needed. But some of the keywords that I'll usually use when I'm bringing an item back is present uh, the item to the NPC or display the item. Uh, you can also try using this, but only use give as like an absolute last resort. And the reason why, and I know this is the keyword in some instances, but if you type give, uh, like if I would, would have typed give beaker man and hit enter, that would have given the beaker to the man. And now I don't actually have the item to use the correct keyword. So now what I would need to do, I don't think I can actually kill him, probably because he's, uh, this is probably a peace room and he's probably too high for me anyways. And I'm not a thief, so I can't steal it off him. I basically nullified all my work. So I would have to essentially start the quest over. So use give as a last resort if you can't figure anything else out. But let's go ahead and, uh, now that I talked in our information scrolled off the screen. Let's see what he actually wants us to do next. All right, so it looks like we need to visit Master Theobald and then display the beaker to him. Okay, so I know that Master Theobald is actually the Mage Guild Master and I just know that from playing. 
If you didn't know that, then obviously while you're walking around exploring, um, just you got to make mental notes of again what your uh, what NPCs you're seeing and what room descriptions you're reading. So let's go ahead and head over to the Guildmaster. Select just as a uh, example here. If we were to walk wandered into here not knowing where we were, we can see that Elder the Master Thief is here. So if we see mention of that at some other point for a different quest, we can just make a mental note. Uh, but anyways, Theobald is right here, and it said that we need to display the beaker to him. So let's go ahead and type display beaker. And voila, that appears to have worked because it looks like he said something back to us. Uh, it looks like he wants us to head outside uh, east of town. So in the forest east of town and pick a sprig of marjoram. Oh, and don't use your fingers to pick it. It is very delicate and gets crushed easily. So now this is where, this is actually uh, adds a little bit of a twist and makes this quest a little bit trickier because it says not to pick it with our hands. And what that's telling me then is that I need an additional item to be able to pick this. Now, this item could be something that's found in the zone. Um, it could be found, like it could be found east of Solus in the forest. It could be found in a completely different zone. I could buy it off an NPC. Um, there's multiple places, <laughs> again, depending on the quest that you might have to get this item from. Now, I know um, that I need to go to the general shop and there's actually a pair of shears there that we need to buy. But again, if you're new, um, those are just some of the other things that you need to keep in mind and think of as you're trying to figure out quests. Um, so let's go ahead and type LI to get a listing here. And there should be some shears. Looks like item number six. So a pair of garden shears. Let's go ahead and type buy six. And now we have some gardening shears. So excellent. Now we need to go outside uh, east of town and try to find this uh, bush of marjoram. And I don't actually know exactly where that's at. Um, let's just start, go out here and start wandering until we find it. Uh, I think it's northish. North, east. It's by the beehive. Somewhere out here, there's a beehive. Oh, I think this is it actually. This, yeah, the beehive should be west. Okay, excellent. So um, above the buzzing hive, so you can see here there's a down exit. This is actually, a, uh, since we're here, a fun kind of lower level zone. So check that out. I would, uh, not sure exactly what level it is. I would make sure you're probably at least level three or four before you head down there. And there might be some mobs that aggro you uh, when you walk in, which means that they attack you on site instead of you attacking them. So just uh, keep that in mind. But anyways, east of this, I think, is the room that we want. So let's go ahead and read this room description. It says the trees are more numerous and closer together here. You notice many colorful plants and mosses growing on the forest floor. Some exotic, exotic. that's probably, that's the keyword there, I think. Flowering shrubberies, that might also be a keyword that have made a home of this area. Enjoying the sunlight. Ancient trees occupy this part of the forest, withered from years. A loud humming can be heard to the west. So let's just type, look, shrubberies. Okay, and that actually says amongst the shrubberies you notice a marjoram bush. Let's just try just because I'm curious if I type look exotic. Awesome, that tells us the same thing. And then if we even typed look bush, I bet you that would also tell us. Oh, that actually gives us more information. So a small marjoram bush looks very delicate. If you wanted to, uh, ho ho, I think that's the keyword as well. If you wanted to prune off a sprig, you would definitely need, oh, look at that. I didn't even, it even spells it out for us. Need gardening shears. <laughs> All right, cool. So I think uh, if I actually looked at the shears, that kind of spoils what I was going to show you. I'm still going to show you this, what I would usually do, because I thought I was going to need to figure this out. Uh, but if I look at the shears, I think it says right here, uh, these are just your typical shears, usually used by those with a green thumb to prune their plants. So that, uh, again, tells me that I need to prune it. But what I would do is, let's say that I didn't I didn't get that information. Um, some things that I might try to do is type clip, bush, pick, bush, hack, bush, um, so on and so forth. I'd basically exhaust everything that I could think of. And then when I ran out of things to try, what I would do then, let me uh, let me switch over here to trusty Microsoft Word. Uh, and obviously you can Google this too, just search for synonyms of whatever you're trying to do. So uh, if I just type in clip, uh, snip, hack, and then what I'll do is I'll right click on it and I'll look at synonyms and then I'll see if there's anything here that looks like a something potentially that I could try. So there's shear, trim, so on and so forth. But 
Um, so again, that's just a uh, just a little tip. That's what I do when I get stuck. <laughs> So let's go ahead and type prune a bush, and I got the uh, I got the sprig. Let's head back over to Theobald and see if we can complete this quest. And let's keep spamming west till we get back to the square. Up north, northwest, and now we have two items. Let's just type listen man. See if that. <laughs> that's rude. Seek out your own guildmaster. Um, let's type display since that's been working for us. Marjoram. Well, that's not it. Um, display beaker. There we go. Um, so yada, yada, yada. Gives us a beaker and tells us to quaff it at our own leisure. So we now have, if we check our inventory, a green speckled potion. All we got to do is go ahead and type quaff potion and hit enter. And just like that, we now know our stats. So uh, again, if you hadn't bought the potion of lore, uh, once you once you use that potion and type score, it'll show your stats right there. And an added bonus for this potion, this actually gave us detect invisibility and detect magic as well. So saved us 50 coins and got us a couple of buffs to use in the meantime. So if you have any questions, go ahead and toss that down below. I'm going to go ahead and end this because it's probably getting pretty long from me yapping. Um, so thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.